Tesla initially was substantially weaker after hours, but then came that word of uh, the Model Y being built in Austin with those 4680 cells. Tell us why that's so significant. Yeah, and it's just like Microsoft yesterday. The knee jerk in a nervous environment is sell the stocks. Then look at Microsoft today, even the Fed backdrop. Look, if you look at the headline from this quarter, it's really Austin has started to build cars, and you look at 4680 as a battery technology. I mean, that to me is sort of the winchpin to the next stage of the Tesla story. Because remember, right now, Tesla, they don't have a demand problem. Demand's outstripping supply by 30%. They got a supply problem. So now you get Austin, you, you're going to significantly expand in Shanghai as well as Fremont. That's the key. Yeah, so uh, Tesla does see those supply constraints enduring throughout 2022, uh, yet uh, forecasting 50% growth in deliveries. So uh, how are they going to manage that? And how do you think they've managed the supply chain issues so far? I think they've navigated basically better than any automaker in the world. And I think that's what's so impressive. You look at the deliveries in this chip shortage. I mean, they, they beat the street by almost 20 percent. And I think if you start to actually factor in, if it wasn't for a supply chain issue, you could potentially be looking at 70 percent growth in 2022. And that's what the, the street's going to see through this. Supply chain are still transitory issues, whether it's six, nine, 12 months. The demand story for EVs is hitting the next stage, and I think Tesla further flexing its muscles. Dan, what about the fact that they won't be introducing any new vehicles this year? Does that matter? No, that does not. I mean, we never viewed Cybertruck that that was going to be 2022. That was always going to be 2023. And also, the last thing you want Tesla to do right now is juggle so many balls in the air. You want them to focus on Model Y, the ramp in Berlin, the ramp in Austin, the 4680 battery technology. That's something I put an asterisk around. It's a huge part of the moat. And then you look at deliveries and profitability. I mean, this company is going to do you know, north of $10 earnings this year and then potentially 25 to 30 in the next three years. That's the difference right now with this Tesla story. What about the China component, whether it's demand or output from their Shanghai Gigafactory? I mean, the hearts and lungs of the bull story in Tesla are in China, both from a supply perspective in terms of Giga and Shanghai. That's been sort of the golden jewel in terms of from a production perspective and demand. I mean, demand continues to, to really look robust in China, potentially on a 50,000 per month type run rate. Because China, and you see this with Neo and, and Xping and some other names that we like in EVs in China, you're really starting to see an EV story in China it really elevates significantly. Tesla's is a big part of that. Uh, Dan, we've got Elon Musk on this analyst call. He didn't appear at the last one. He said he only shows up if he's got something important to say. Um, he mentioned the 4680 batteries uh, for the Model Y. But he's also been talking about how the Optimus human robot is going to be the most important thing Tesla works on this year. How does that square away with your point about Tesla not trying to do too many things at once? Well, it's, well, it's typical Musk. There's always going to be a lot of different uh, projects going on. But the most important thing here is 4680. And also, you look at full self-driving, 60,000 beta customers. That's important in terms of the next leg of the story in terms of FSD. You look at robotic technology and some of the things they're working on. I mean, these are more three, five years down the road. From a street perspective, it's really around the production and the supply. That's what they need to ramp. You look at the demand story underlying, just really looks robust. And, and especially if you look at these earnings combined with what we saw yesterday with Microsoft, it's starting to give investors comfort. This is no longer just a Fed vacuum. You're starting to actually see the fundamental news in terms of this fourth industrial revolution taking on.